Good evening, everyone. This is meteorologist Ben Price at the National Weather Service office in Springfield, Missouri, with a briefing for you on the potential severe weather and flooding Saturday night. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center currently has an enhanced risk here in the orange, which is a level three out of five for extreme southwest Missouri, southeast Kansas, and northeast Oklahoma, with damaging winds and large hail being the primary hazards. Uh, so our current thinking is that late afternoon Saturday, strong to severe thunderstorms will develop in far northeast Oklahoma and southeast Kansas, uh, where I'm highlighting with the cursor. Uh, these storms will initially be scattered, but will bring the primary threat um, of damaging winds and large hail up to the size of tennis balls. It will push to the east-southeast uh, rather slowly through the overnight hours, which will introduce the threat for localized heavy rainfall and flash flooding. Um, as the storms move into southwest Missouri, they may grow into a line, which will make damaging winds the more dominant threat into the overnight hours. Uh, taking a look here at our individual hazard prob probabilities, the dominant threat is for damaging wind here in the center with a 30% pro probability within 25 miles of any location uh, within the red shading here. Um, so that is a 30% probability within 25 miles of any location in there. Uh, large hail currently has a lower probability as yellow is denoting 15%. Um, however, this black hatch area indicates that there's a possibility for significant hail or hail greater than two inches. And we are expecting hail up to the size of tennis balls to be possible in this region, which includes our far western counties of Barton and Vernon in Missouri, and Cherokee, Crawford, and Bourbon counties uh, in Kansas. Now there is a 2% probability of tornadoes, as denoted here by the green, but we want to emphasize that the threat is very low for tornadoes and we don't expect very many tornado producing storms with this system. So the timing of general thunderstorms will begin in the early evening around 8 p.m. in our far western counties, including uh, Pittsburgh, and, uh, Pittsburgh, Kansas, and Joplin, Missouri. From there, the storms will push eastward, bringing the highest chances for thunderstorms along and east of Highway 65 around and after midnight. Uh, the red box here um, shows the likely time frame for severe weather, so that's between about 8 p.m. to a little after midnight. Um, and this this means that for locations with high chances of thunderstorms after midnight, so any location that has red boxes after um, this red outline, which includes places like Camdenton and West Plains, um, that means you will likely see thunderstorms late Saturday night, but there's a much lower chance that they will be severe. Um, but there is still a good chance for thunderstorms in those locations. So another major threat with these storms is excessive rainfall and subsequent flash flooding. Uh, these storms will initially be slow moving and may produce rainfall rates of two to three inches per hour, bringing widespread rainfall totals of one to two inches with localized totals up to three to six inches for areas that are most impacted by these slow moving storms. The highest chance for this will be within the moderate risk or a three out of four risk highlighted by the Weather Prediction Center here in red. Um, this includes two of our Kansas counties, including Cherokee and Crawford. Um, but the slight risk area in yellow here extends from Highway 65 westward, uh, where heavy rain and flash flooding is still very possible with any storms that move through. And these are the current forecast rainfall amounts. And again, this pretty much lines up with the Weather Prediction Center outlook I showed on the previous slide, uh, with widespread areas of rainfall up to an inch west of Highway 65. Um, and 1.5 to 2 inches uh, along and west of I-49 in this area. Um, this area here in red could experience localized totals of 3 to 6 inches from any of those slow-moving storms we discussed before. Um, and these areas also, uh, it's important to note that these areas also had 3 to 6 inches of rain just in the last three days, which may make flooding even more of a possibility if the soil is too saturated to absorb water at a reasonable rate. Um, also important to note that these storms will occur during the nighttime hours, and flooding is especially dangerous at nighttime as it is difficult to assess how fast water is moving or how deep the water is, especially at low water crossings. So please turn around and don't drown if you encounter water pooling or running on the roadways. With all of this said, we have high confidence that severe storms will occur in extreme southeast Kansas and along and west of I-49 Saturday evening. There is lower confidence, however, in the eastern extent of severe storms overnight. 
Uh, the storms are likely to congeal into a line as they move eastward, which would bring damaging winds as the main threat, though we are not confident in just how far east that line will get before transitioning to below severe limits. Um, some model guidance suggests that there is a low chance of an alternative scenario where the severe storms that de develop in Kansas grow into a line and push more south-southeast rather than east, which would keep the severe threat out of our forecast area. However, in this scenario, it's important to note that non-severe thunderstorms will still be likely across the entire forecast area, with sub-severe wind gusts and small hail still possible, as well as localized flooding. That will be the end of our briefing. You can see some additional resources on screen here, and remember to have multiple ways to get National Weather Service warnings and seek shelter immediately when any warnings are issued for your location. Additionally, be aware of the nighttime flooding threat as it makes it very difficult to assess floodwaters, let alone see them, um, so turn around and don't drown. Make sure to stay weather aware with us by keeping up to date with our upcoming forecast for any potential updates in timing, impacts, or hazards of these storms. And thank you for tuning in.